Colossians 1.7 is continuing the thought from verse 6 that not only in Colossae but around the world, people have heard and have come to know the grace of God. And now we're going to find out how the Colossians learned about the grace of God. Kathos emathete apa epephra tu agape tu sundulu hemon hos esten pistos huper humon diakonos tu Christu. So up in verse 6, they learned epigenota. Well, how do they learn? Well, just as you learned, and again, this is one of these words that if you have been memorizing your roots, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? The lexical form is monthano, and this is that category of verb that is adding the alpha nu and the nu to form the present tense stem, but the root is moth, and so emathita is an easy-to-understand aorist. So just as you learned from Epaphras, interesting question, what case is this? Well, his name, like lots of names, are only partially declined, but you know it's genitive because of apa. And that explains why tu agape tu sundulu is in the genitive. So it's an appositional phrase, Epaphras, our fellow servant, the beloved one. So our beloved fellow servant. And by the way, and this is again one of those reminders that variants rarely mean anything significant. There is a variant here. It's humon. So instead of being our beloved fellow servant, it's your beloved fellow servant. One of the real common textual variants in the New Testament. And there's a slight difference in meaning, but not of any real significance. Then you get your relative clause, who is a faithful servant, right? So pistos is an adjective, not the noun. A faithful servant on behalf of you all. And who is he a servant of? He's a servant of Christ. So actually pretty straightforward. So kathos is your connector. Main statement is that you learn from Epaphras. Who is Epaphras? He is our beloved fellow servant, relative clause, who is a faithful servant on your behalf of Christ. You could leave it on one line or you could break up the modifiers a little if you wanted to. So, got to indent your connector. So just as you learn from Epaphras, who is Epaphras? He is our beloved fellow servant, And who is Epaphras? He is a faithful servant on your behalf. And we're going to run out of room again here, aren't we? So shrink it down. And he's a servant of Christ.